This is Jim McConnell coming to you from Redmond, Oregon, McConnell Labs headquarters where we manufacture light elegant snail products as well as uh, other things. So today we are going over SDSs. This is the fourth SDS video. SDS video number one covered the entire SDS in the different sections. Video number two covered sections one and two. And then video three covered section three. This was not planned out. It just happened to fall that way. Section four today, we're covering sections four through eight. So end of the numeric uh, associations. And today we're getting a little wild and crazy. Uh, first aid measures in section four. This is important. So if you ingest it, get it in your eyes or inhale it, what do you do? This should be pretty explicit. Um, this is the information that a doctor or a pharmacist or uh, an EMT would need to take a look at. Okay, make sure that you can get that information through to them and whatever you do, don't inhale this stuff. Don't put it in uh, an airbrush system and spray it. Just brush it on, please, just brush it on. All right, section five, firefighting measures. That's more if you have a warehouse like ours and we make it in large quantities. What's gonna happen if it starts to burn? Um, and so that's more of a concern for us. Accidental release measures. So what happens if we have like a 55 gallon drum spill? What are they gonna do with it? The nice thing is that this cures up in sunlight. So wait till the sun comes up and let it cure up, scrape it up with a shovel, put it in a plastic bag and make sure it's all solid and then throw it in the waste. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we advise people. In the salon, if you spill a little bit, make sure you put your gloves on. Avoid contacting it with your skin if possible. Wipe it up. If it is something like our Vitaprime, make sure that you follow those instructions. Baking soda is really helpful. Also, if you get something like Vitaprime on your skin, what do you do? Uh, you're best off making sure that you always have baking soda around because it will neutralize the acid. Uh, if you don't have baking soda, mud works really well. Uh, oddly enough, mud, scrub it. Uh, you want something with a fairly high pH, so that's always a good thing. Uh, so put that on there and neutralize it, and then wash well with soap and water. Uh, but if it's just Jimmy Gel, you're going to wipe it down, remove any excess material, scrub the skin with a little bit of cleanser, and then wash with soap and water, and you'll be fine. Handling and storage information, this is important uh, because you don't want to store this stuff in hot areas. Let's say you live in Arizona and it's summertime and you have a black car. That trunk temperature will get very, very hot. So don't store it in there because it may cure up all on its own. Temperature alone can cure this stuff up if it gets above about 170 degrees. So be careful. If it gets cold, if it freezes, it's not a problem. If the Vita Prime freezes, just let it warm up. Make sure you shake the bottle and make sure it's liquid. If it's liquid, you'll, you'll hear a sloshing sound. Uh, but if it's solid, you won't hear anything. And if you pull the brush out, it will literally pull the bristles out of the brush and you'll be left with a stick. So let's not do that. Anyway, uh, keep it away from flames, keep it away from excessive heat and uh, avoid open fire. So Anyway, that's pretty much it down here. Special precautions. It says do not store where temperatures can exceed 50 degrees centigrade. That's a really safe temperature. It's closer to about 165, but just be careful. Section eight, exposure controls and personal protection. This is important because if you are handling it on a regular basis, like a nail technician, you want to make sure you wear nitrile gloves. Uh, I personally prefer four and a half mil thick or thicker. If you feel like those are too stiff for you to work in, then I would go ahead and you can go down to something a little bit thinner, like three, three and a half, maybe four. Uh, we have some people that like to work with like seven <laughs> mil thick gloves. They're really thick, they're really stiff, not my preferred uh, avenue. So just make sure that you wear those uh, when you're using them on a regular basis. Do your clients need to wear them? Most likely not. Uh, because it, you're not going to be exposing them to it like you get exposed to it. So if you get it on your skin on a regular basis, year after year after year, all the time, all day long, five days a week, and if you have a propensity for allergies, then making sure that your, your work area is clean is always important anyway, but it's more important if you have a tendency to get allergies. So be careful. 
Uh, at the salon level, I don't think eye protection is really necessary, nor do I feel like respiratory protection is necessary unless you're using an e-file or if you show an allergy to the dust particles. If you show an allergy to the dust particles, then just make sure you have a proper face covering and then you'll be fine with respiratory protection. Uh, body protection, I, I prefer to wear long pants all the time uh, when I'm working around this stuff, but uh, an apron is also helpful or a spa jacket is good. We sell those. So if you feel like having a little extra, protect, extra protection, that's a good way to go. Uh, next video, we're going to cover sections 9 through 16. So we're going to bang out the rest of these on the next video. Thank you very much for your attention. It's a pleasure talking with you. All right. Bye-bye.